Oh, you're not going to shut me up, are you? Okay, no. here, go inside. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Two Idiots Talking About Art. I'm idiot number one, Rodney Thompson. This is idiot number two, W.E. Nautoscoric. Hello. Hello. Uh, today, we are interviewing Kai Loon Q, an incredible artist. A lot of fun to talk to, mm -hmm. and we really enjoyed getting to know him and his work and process and history. And we got to know um, him a lot. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah, it was great. He was, he just gave us so much, too. Yeah, it was no it was filter. Awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> I love um, it. Well, a little bit about Kai. He uh, He's won awards with the Portrait Society, Portrait Society of America. Mm -hmm. uh, he's had works and published in Poets and Artists Magazine and Plain Air Magazine. He's been featured in Southwest Art Magazine's 21 Under 31. Mm -hmm. um, he's a teacher and founder of Kailun Q Studio. Yep. Uh, he was also a teacher for Sentient Academy. He's a pro team artist for Turkel Art Supplies. Uh, and he was on the main faculty for Vision X Live Global Art Conference. Yeah. Um, just a very, very busy man. Indeed. Man. Indeed. Yeah. Very talented. And like he is just go, go, go. And. Uh, he's just got a lot under his belt. It was also and it's, it, it makes sense because his he's just his work is incredible, and he, he works mainly yeah. in Ala Prima. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's he's cranking him out. It's really bit, uh, amazing that we were actually just able to get some time off of him. I mean, sheer, yeah, I know I was very uh, grateful that we uh, actually how got busy to... he was with his life. Yeah, yeah, so and he that... he was really nice about uh, squeezing us in, so it was mm -hmm. it was awesome. Um, so you could you can find his work at uh, on his website at kailunq.com. That's uh, K A I L U N Q U dot com, and you can under the same uh, on Instagram mm -hmm. at kailunq, all one word. Yeah, right on, right on. Yeah, there you go. So without uh, further ado, now, so are you ready? Uh, I sure am. Yeah. Very well. Then here is our interview with Kailun Q. Yeah, hope you enjoy. We're interviewing uh, Kai Loon Q today, and uh, welcome, Kai. We are very excited to have you. Uh, okay. Just to kind of get started, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. Thank you guys again for having me. This is um, it's great to be on your show. Thank um, you for coming. But yeah. yeah, my name is uh, Kai, Kai Loon Q. Um, I'm an oil painter based in California, and I've been painting for... Man, it's been like almost 10 years now. It's like seven, six, mm -hmm. seven years around. Um, currently, I'm focusing a lot of my time on just like teaching, um, working with places like Sentient Academy and going to be a faculty on Vision X Live conference. Uh, so I've just been Very doing exciting. a lot of stuff with them. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, I just I, I just like painting. So I just paint whatever. As you guys, you guys are familiar with my work, I just, you know, I don't really have a genre that I paint. I just paint whatever piques my interest you know what i mean nice. yeah no. <laughs> but yeah 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 so you don't really have like a particular subject matter that you really lean towards uh, um to... you not really it used to be pure portraits because mm -hmm. um you know when i first started i didn't really have any you know instructions per se mm -hmm. uh you know i went to an art school but they weren't really focused on like that figurative art aspect of teaching of so much. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of what I learned was from Richard Schmidt's um, Ala Prima book. Oh, nice. So yeah. So the, holy, the Holy the Holy Bible. Bible. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I went through a phase where I was just just trying to, you know, just you know, trying to copy and just trying to like basically imitate like Schmidt mm -hmm. for like the longest time at the beginning. Um, but then I realized, I mean, oh, this is like, this is cool, but it's like, it's not really me. Like the subjects that he finds interesting, I I don't really find, I might not yeah. find that interesting, you know? Yeah. Um, 
Which is good. But, I mean, you, you're basically yeah. focused more on the technique aspect of it before the actual stylization or, you know. Yeah, basically. Yeah, no, I think that's always the right thing to do. But that's just me personally, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I I really read through the uh, Ala Prima book, well, both of them, I guess, really, so many times. And I just definitely wanted to be exactly like that. And I, just, I really pushed myself to be in that, like, his mm -hmm. style, everything he painted, and I realized like this is not, this is not what I really want to do. I love yeah. the technique, but <laughs> it's just you know I, I want to take that part from it, but then just do in my, in my own things. You know, mm -hmm. it's well, I had a one of our interviewees, Corey Pickett, he coined a phrase of schmitting <laughs> all over yourself, which was <laughs> I thought, oh man, completely genius uh, because it, it was so yeah, accurate. Once he said that, it blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, I have to change what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so you funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, going on that, you, you did a lot of like, you taught yourself quite a bit. And uh, I know you, you took several different uh, classes and, and you went to different schools for art and um, you didn't quite get what you were looking for. So maybe just give us an idea of how that, that self-teaching part of your, your learning for process sure. worked. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, like, this is something I talk to my students all the time about too, because, you know, um, some of them are not like, they were like me at the beginning. I didn't really have money to go to like workshops or classes mm -hmm. or ateliers i didn't even know what ateliers were actually so right i mean just a little brief history um how, like how, how long how long do we have here like like 30, 30 minutes as so like, much oh, you time can, as yeah, you oh, have. Okay. Yeah. i'll still try not to make it too long i'll just like give like a brief kind of scope on like let's, I let's guess, just say um, let's just say ronnie and i talked about a really stupid topic for close something close to two hours before so we have all oh, okay. we have all the time yeah. all right okay yeah, we wasted cool. a lot uh, of maybe you can give us. <laughs> <laughs> all right awesome just just cut me off whenever but uh yeah so i guess for me i started art this is a little controversial but oh. i i actually started art not because i liked it but because i was kind of forced into it <laughs> oh, so by your, uh, yeah. your parents or yeah for yeah, um, my dad, he's actually a professional uh, uh, artist, like a modern artist. Like he does oh. like, you know, museum shows and installation shows and, you know, installation yeah, yeah. works in, in China. Yeah, yeah. So he's an art professor there, actually, at the at the Tianjin Academy of Fine Arts, which is like a city next to Beijing. And it's yeah. like one of the top 10 art schools there. <clears throat> but anyways, um, you know, growing up, I, I grew up in California. I was mm. born in China, came here when I was two. And I, I just stayed here until I was... Um, I, I was like until middle school right mm -hmm. until the end of middle school um and i was like not a good kid and i was like living <laughs> in silicon valley so oh okay you know like the grade of school it was all very rigorous and i just did not live up to it um i was like a straight d student <laughs> like uh <laughs> it was not good to the point where my the principal actually had to sit my mom down and tell her like at the end of the at the end end of the uh, eighth grade, like the, like before graduation, she was like, "Listen, um, you should send him somewhere else, not to like you know like the high school that's associated with us, because he's not gonna survive there. Like one week, oh, he's God. out because like the school's not gonna have him there because he's gonna take their grade point average down. That's not good. So oh, you know, they had a long <laughs> hard, hard conversation with my mom, and you know, my parents separated when I was like super little, but like they still talk and stuff. And okay. my dad's in China, and you know, he's never really you know, taking care of me that much, but I mean, he still supports me and stuff, but we just never lived together. Sure. Um, and you know, she had a conversation with him and he was like, ah, oh, you know, like maybe send him to China. I'll get him through my connections. I'll get him into one of the, like the art academies here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at least then he'll be able to learn some kind of drawing skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, because at that time I did like to draw, but it wasn't like anything like what I do now. It's like, stupid like anime cartoons or of like course. janky, like, you know, star Wars characters with like no hands, like, balls for like you know circles for like feet and hands because i didn't know how yeah, to draw yeah. them Don't like worry. stick figure <laughs> almost yeah all, I, artists, I, I just... all the artists <laughs> modern artists and their origin stories are comic oh, books man. and mangas <laughs> yeah i feel like it all goes yeah. back to like comic books and manga <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's it like dragon ball z that's like that was oh, the, god yeah <laughs> yeah that was, sure. that was that was that's what started it right um it was like uh, yeah, dragon ball my, z my and dad... gundam is like i feel like the two things oh yeah that everybody always tried, gundam you know? was good too <laughs> man those are classics oh yeah mm -hmm. um but anyways, yeah, so they tricked me into going to China. So they were like, we're going to go visit your grandparents for the summer. I'm like, cool. All right. As long as I'm back, you know, in time for school, 
you know, that's cool. Right. And then we got and we arrived and I was like, OK, I'm going to, you know, when am I going to leave? Like, how long are we here? And she's like, well, I'm here for like two weeks. And I'm like, what about me? She's like, oh, no, you're, you're just here. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and oh, man. I wasn't about yeah, to ask just, you. Yeah. Describe tricked. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tricked. yeah. That's pretty brutal. And yeah. <laughs> Basically, wow. and, and like, you know, my dad was like, yo, you, you need to get the full experience because, you know, mm -hmm. you know, for them, they wanted me to like, at least amp up my Chinese too. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was like their goal. The art was just kind of like a little add on. Right. right. So did you speak they, by that, by, at that point? Or? I, I did like broken, like Chinese kind mm -hmm. of like I'm fluent now, thanks right. to that experience, which I'm grateful for. And yeah. also like what I'm doing, I'm grateful for that too. But yeah. yeah, so he had me stay in the dormitories and, you know, I was just like there. Man, we were training seven days a week, actually, oh, wow. um, you know, from morning to night until like 10 p.m. Yeah. Uh, and they it, it's a very different system out there uh, compared to like the U.S. Because mm -hmm. for them, because of their uh, relationship with the Soviet Union back in like back in the days, they're mm -hmm. still adopting a lot of like the Russian academic methods of drawing into their in like the, oh, yes. the yeah. school okay. program. So, mm -hmm, yeah. So we were taught like, you know, like cast drawing um you know uh like figure drawing portrait drawing still life drawing and then like and all within the vein of like the russian academic kind of style where it's like right. cross hatching you know like super yeah. like drawing from life yeah, it was cool it was great but it was really competitive it was really really intense but i was able to kind of you know i was able to learn kind of like you know a little bit about that just from being there i was there for a year and a half so mm -hmm. i was there the teachers didn't really teach you anything just because i'm not for the reasons that I'm about to say for the U.S., but because like everyone there was already so good mm -hmm. that um, the teacher was just like, yeah, there, there's just do it. Right. You guys are already good. So I learned more from just like um, looking at my classmates. Right. I was in the dorm with like this uh, one person. His name is Sui Sheng, And he actually to this day, I still feel like it's like one of the top draftsmen mm -hmm. like I've ever met. Like, you know, and I'm talking like, Poo, like he can bust out like a cast drawing that looks like it's done in like a hundred hours, but he did it in like two hours. It's wow. insane. Like, I don't understand how he, they do that. Um, yeah. I'll share some of the images with you guys later if you want. Oh, I would um, love to that. see that. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. So, you know, I was with him and actually I think it was thanks to staying with him and just looking and watching him. That's actually what helped me kind of understand how to self-teach myself because, mm -hmm. you know, there was still a language barrier, so I couldn't really ask him too many questions because he just get too technical. And I'm like, I don't understand what you're saying. So I just <laughs> like watched watch. what he did. Mm -hmm. Right. And and then, like you know, um, I was there for a year and a half. And when I came back to the States, um, I was able to get enrolled into um, art school, uh, art high school in San Francisco. OK. And um, yeah. And I mean, because I had training automatically, I was considered the best in the class and like the school, like really like my work, which is weird because in china i was considered just like average like slightly below average you know uh -huh. um but when i was here everyone was like oh my god like yo you draw better than like college students that's crazy i'm like really <laughs> oh, and then like for me i was like i like that feeling so i i i hate to admit it but you know uh at the beginning of my art journey it was purely narcissism like it was just <laughs> like i like the feeling of people saying yo that's so cool and I'm like, oh, I like that feeling when you tell that to yeah. me. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep trying to get better because mm -hmm. I want more of that reaction. Um, yeah, totally. You know, so that was like maybe, you know, the entirety of my high school. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I went off to college. And it was around like senior, junior year uh, was when I discovered like Richard Schmidt, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because I discovered uh, him through just watching Jeremy Lip King. And then I saw Joseph Darvich and like, you know, I discovered all these Instagram artists, right? Yeah, right, um, yeah. Yeah. And, but I, I just didn't, I, we never learned how to paint. And, you know, in China, you don't get the oil paint unless you have complete mastery over like drawing. So for me, all the oil paintings I've ever seen anyone do in China was like, like just super high level. Mm -hmm. So for me, yeah. I just thought oil painting was just some magical medium that I just would never be able to touch. So I just, <laughs> it was like the Holy Grail. But I, mean, I was like, I, I could never touch yeah. it. <laughs> Did you touch any form of painting up until that point? Like, no, like no, not, not at all. I mean, a little bit of poster colors because that's what they taught you like in terms of painting but for okay. me like I, I i sucked at poster color painting because i never cleaned my materials because you know you had to clean it near the bathroom it smelled really bad and also like the water was like super cold and it's like during the winter forget about it and so i never i just never took good care of my materials so of course i could never really actually learn because all my materials were like mud and dirty and like you know hard yeah. so Oof. i can't really learn like that right right um, oh yeah yeah, but it was actually in college and I'm actually kind of like, actually, I think I mentioned this to you, Rodney, that, uh, you know, um, 
when I went to college, I didn't actually know how to uh, charcoal draw either. And I feel like charcoal drawing was like a gateway to oil painting for me. Right? Yeah. That so, was a graphite uh, mainly. It was, it was, yeah, we, we don't train us in graphite and only in that style of like cross hatching. So no kidding. Okay. I didn't know how to do it any other way. And I didn't think there was any other way. Right. So mm-hmm. when I went to college, you know, I was still searching up Instagram, looking at all these guys. I was trying to teach myself about charcoal draw. I didn't really know how to. Actually, I stumbled across your account, Rodney. Like I, I told, I told you that I was like, Yo, yeah. you're actually one of the first artists that, uh, that I was actually trying to study. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, so to crazy, dude. I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, like you're, I remember <laughs> it was like your pop culture, like um, charcoal drawings. I, you were, yeah. I remember you posted like those step by step, like your Dracula, your. Uh, I think it was like Medusa and like your yeah, Frankenstein. Like Frankenstein like, and yeah, yeah, that that helped a lot because like I was like I was trying to figure out how to do charcoal and then like I saw you were doing that and I was like oh you broke into steps that was like a gold mine to me because I was like oh now I can like dissect oh that's how you do it okay and then so yeah so thank you like this is why i was like super oh, yeah. happy when you guys asked me i was like whoa this is like full circle it's crazy that is, that <laughs> that, is crazy wow yeah that, that's <laughs> super flattering first off first off and uh just to that, i mean that's always what i wanted to try to do is just kind of share the process you know because yeah. there's so much of it that i just figured out on my own as well and mm-hmm. i thought well somebody else probably wants to know here's kind of what i'm doing it's probably not exactly what everybody else is doing but that might be good or bad but you're the you're the first person that's ever actually been like, oh, I saw really? that and it really helped. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, really? All oh, right, that's yeah. so crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was you and this other guy um, who taught at AAU. His name is Joy Vic Yaban. Um, oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you guys like were posting like the step by steps. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, yo, this is, like free lessons. This, yeah, this that's awesome, so man. funny too because I was yeah. watching his stuff and you know like, oh, that's oh really? really good. I, yeah, <laughs> it's doing the same Dang. thing. So. Yeah, yeah, but that 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 really helped. Yeah. You think that kind of con- contributed to uh, you wanting to actually post these videos and like more, be more of a teacher side of the scene? Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, definitely, like, definitely. Because yeah. for me, it was so hard. I felt like, um, I mean, even for me, like how I studied was um, like, you know, like those DVDs that they released, like, you know, for oh, Jeremy yeah. Looking, Morgan Weisling, like all those guys. Uh, you know, I didn't have money to actually buy the DVDs, but they had like the trailer videos, right? Yeah. Like those two 240p yeah, like, like snippets. trailer videos. Mm-hmm. Um, I would dissect those trailer videos. I would like pause and then I would like try to like to the point where I would even I teach some of my private students how to do this. I don't feel good about teaching it wide scale because I don't want to teach people how to steal. <laughs> like, yeah. but but for me it was like to the point where I was like just looking at like their palette and I was looking at like the flow, like the you know the angle of where like the brush stroke was like going from. So I was like mm-hmm. trying to dissect their color mixing. By just looking at like, wh- you know what I mean? Wow. Like, yeah, totally. Yeah, I, so I, I'm, I'm definitely guilty of that too. The, the yeah, yeah. So it's lesson. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how kind of how I did it. Um, and, and you know, for me, it's like, like I said, the college that I went to, it's a good school, but you know, they just didn't really teach like what I kind of wanted to learn, which is like how to representationally paint. Um, mm-hmm. uh, should I try to shade? say who they are i mean they're an okay school like they're one of the top schools i you, think you, you, um, could, you could tell us and i'll be happy to bleep it out <laughs> yeah okay i mean you don't have to it's fine uh i went to i i went to i went to oh, okay, yeah. okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. but yeah yeah i mean like i only went to that school i'm gonna be real with you i only went to that school because i watched hairspray and i really like the song good morning baltimore and I was like, I want to sing that song like in the morning. <laughs> like, that's right. the only reason why I went to that school. <laughs> I know Harry's yeah. but I've never seen it nor watched the music. Oh, yeah. There's a song called there. Good Morning Baltimore. And okay. I was like, yo, this is in Baltimore. So I want to go to where like the song's based. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that that's awesome. enough reason to move somewhere and go to the school, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. really choose um, our schools to begin with. You know, it's I feel like it's whatever's accessible because. It I, is. I yeah. I, honestly, I do feel like it is. And I mean, you know, in terms of self-teaching, like, you know, that's what I kind of have to do. I did one more thing that mm-hmm. I really like try to encourage all my students nowadays to do too, which is, um, you know, like I said, I didn't have money for workshops, but mm-hmm. I was in the East Coast. There was Greyhound. You can go to New York. You can go to Philadelphia. It was easy travel, right? It was cheap travel. Mm-hmm. Um, what's in New York? Like, our students league, you know, GCA, mm-hmm. like, you know, like what's in, what's in Philadelphia, like student commonality. What do they, what do these studios have? Open model session. Oh yeah. They open Who to the open model sessions, really good painters. So yeah. I remember I, um, yeah, I remember that I, I was at, um, I went to New York actually the first time I actually met up with, um, one of my, one of my good friends. Um, I mean, now he's kind of like, kind of like, he's kind of like famous now. It's like famous guy. Uh, 
the, the Devon Rodriguez, the guy that oh, yeah, all the yeah. people on the subway. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We, we got like way back. We knew each other back when we were still in high school and stuff. And we were like training together. And nice. he was the one that actually introduced me, which I'm grateful for, uh, to all the New York people there. So he there was like this draw a at this high school called the High School of Art and Design. Mm-hmm. And um, people like Max Ginsburg, Stephen Asail, David Kasson, they will frequent there all the time, like during the draw And he invited me over there. And then I, you know, I, I stayed over at his place and we went and he introduced me to Max. He introduced me to like Ricky Mujica, all mm-hmm. those guys. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. It's like a like, gold that mine, awesome. yeah. That was the first time I was able to kind of like get that experience. And, you know, actually I got to thank Devon a lot because he also hooked me up with my first real mentor, Daniel Keese, actually, uh, okay. because of, I don't know if you guys know Daniel Kiesel's work, but oh uh, yeah, totally, yeah, he's a yeah, yeah, artist. yeah. He has this program called the Palette Project. I'm just gonna plug his Palette yeah. Project in because I Helps really place. respect what he's doing with <laughs> yeah. that. Um, it's a program um, that he collaborated with together with a uh, Scottsdale Artist School. It's for students like 17 to 22. It used to be 16 to 21, but I made him change it to 22 because I wanted to go there one last year. Um, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's basically a super dope program. It's a free program where you just apply if you're within that age range mm-hmm. you could be younger i had some students of mine go actually and they're younger and you know it's basically just free like a free class like a free workshop really? a weekend workshop with them and all expense paid they'll help you with your plane ticket they'll they'll oh, wow. help you with your hotel they'll give you rosemary brushes it's like sponsored by like gambling so you get all that covered raymar you get raymar panels to paint on oh, and wow, that's amazing yeah he does that purely just to kind of give back to the next generation and it's actually because that. of him doing that and also because, of, you know, from people like Max Ginsburg teaching at like high school, mm-hmm. uh, that's what inspired me to just, you know, keep teach, just like teach, right? I'm actually right now I'm teaching at this um, private art high school too in San Francisco. That's actually where I was like driving from. That's why I was like rush oh, out. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. But, nice. Well, you live <laughs> yeah, in San Jose. Kind of, oh, you live in San Jose. Right? I live right. in San Jose. Right. Yeah. Okay. Go Sharks. But um but yeah, that's, that's it. That's, that's nice how point. I did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very subtle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no kidding. Okay. That's amazing. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention the traffic. I, we we actually uh, went to school in San Francisco. Uh, oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We both went to the Academy. That's how we know each other. We went to the Academy of Art out there. AU? I'm, yeah. Not, is it AU? No, I guess it is AU now. Yeah. yeah. AU. Yeah. Yeah. AU. Yeah. The job study would like drop me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just had its class a couple of semesters ago. Um, that's it, so it was online, so I didn't get to like the the wonderful part of interacting with him mm-hmm. as much. It was more like him critiquing some of my work, which was still uh, wonderful. But you know, I would have mm-hmm. loved to have been able to like sit in with him. But you know, talking about like it's a good, build. it's a great school. Yeah, yeah. you guys were lucky that you went. We actually, <laughs> I we wish actually I went. went. We actually went back in the days when it was still called Academy of Art College. Yeah, really. That wow. actually switched over while we while were there we're to there. university. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. They got I, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Weird. Yeah. yeah. We were questioning, like, uh, we, we didn't know why. It, anyways. Um, so uh, as far as like talking about workshops and uh, atelier, uh, atelier, like, are there more available in San Francisco now? Because back then at that time when we mm-hmm. were there, it, we had it through our school, but I didn't realize there was yeah. a lot within the city. Um, I mean, not really. So, um, yeah. I mean, I know Sadie, Sadie Valerie, she yeah, used to have her school, there. but Mm-hmm. She's like online now, and I know mm-hmm. Justin Hess does this stuff. I don't really know him, so it's weird that I'm mentioning his name, but I know <laughs> he has something going on in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, my good friend Millie J, uh, Mil- uh, Millie Hankinson, uh, mm-hmm. she used to have like her atelier, but she recently went off when offline. I don't know if you guys know her work, uh, Millie Dudos on Instagram. Yeah, uh, I'll check it out. Super dope. Yeah, yeah she's, she's actually great. taking over me. I'm about to move to LA soon, so she's taking over me as the instructor for the high school I'm teaching at. So they're oh, gonna okay. have her. Oh, oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Millie, <laughs> Millie, Millie Dudos, like M I L L I B Dudos, D O O D L E S. Yeah, Dudos. Okay. Uh, we'll she's really out. dope. I mean, she's there, but I don't, you know, I, I don't, especially with the private high school, like right now that she has to teach. I don't mm. think she's there really. I mean, they might end up. I, I actually, we, I've been teaching at that high school for some times now, and I actually, uh, we recently, like, you know submitted it to get ARC approval. So mm-hmm. if it does, hey, then technically she teaches at Atelier. <laughs> but, you know, nice. uh, yeah, but as for anything, I mean, I mean, I know people like Elizabeth uh, Zanzinger is in like Oakland, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah. there's Golden Gate Atelier, right? But that's also in yeah. Oakland. There's the Bay Area Classical Artist Atelier. That's like San Carlos, I think. Um, yeah. But I think other than that, I, I can't think of any 
others. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know my good friend Gabriel Cope. He also recently like started his atelier near my house in Saratoga. I actually taught a few workshops for him over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jiao Ming oh, did too, cool. actually. That was like really oh. nerve wracking because uh, this one time I had a workshop and it was like a split. It was like um, one week apart. So it was like this workshop, this workshop, week one, week three. And then week two was Zhao Ming's like freaking one day workshop. So it was like sandwiched between. I was like, oh man, that's like nerve wracking. I got to follow <laughs> yeah. <up> that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would but, be super nerve wracking, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, there's, I mean, there's good studios. You know, there's the Live and Chew in Berkeley. You know, yeah. I know all these places just because I've done a lot of research um, on did this. You, did, I used to actually have my atelier here too. I started one back uh, after I graduated college in 2018. It was called Catholic Atelier, and then yeah, I expanded that. that, and now it's like a bunch of private students now with me. But yeah, other than that. I, not, not, a, not really. Like AU is still yeah. pretty good, mm-hmm. you know? I guess a lot of yeah. things are turning. Well, with the advancement of technology that there are like online workshops available, which mm-hmm. a lot of yeah. people are so great because not all cities, yeah. including San Francisco. And I'm in Austin, Texas right now. And there oh, is a are. new, yeah, There, I'm, I'm a little ahead of you guys time-wise. That's why it's a little darker. Um, oh, <laughs> anywho, um, yeah, there, there was maybe one small one or two small like workshops like back in the day like five years ago or something like that and now there's a new one that's open that's pretty popular which is called dojo oh, wow. um but chili dojo yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the- and as good as that is like not everybody can make it whether it's time restriction yeah. or anything so yeah. well, let's you know online workshop is actually a, it's, it's yeah it's really it helps yeah. for those that cannot make it to those which i'm really grateful for as well so yeah yeah Definitely. Yeah. Online workshops are definitely really good. That's actually why I'm working with Sentient right now, just because, mm. um, you know, uh, they're they're really good about like, you know, making everything. like I feel like, man, this is actually better than in person because I'm not trying to promote them. But like it's like you can actually see clearly the the palette, the oh. paint, <laughs> the like the the painting, the freaking reference. And I was like, oh, you get to see exactly what everything is. Whereas in, in real life workshop, it's like only the few lucky two, three people mm-hmm. that's like close to the teacher everyone else is just like in the yeah, back yeah. all the way to the back like uh, yeah. I what he's doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? what's that color he used mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah, I, I mean yeah <laughs> well yeah. do you think um now that we're somewhat post-covid like we're not really totally but you know we're getting there mm-hmm. do you think you'll start doing more in-person stuff like around the country or do you like to stay primarily in, in california when you when mm. teach so for me, um, I always wanted to travel, right? Mm-hmm. I always wanted to travel to teach workshops. Um, I actually almost ended up going to, this is before COVID. I almost like taught a, taught like a workshop in New York. And then mm. I actually almost went to China to give like a, to give a workshop at like a university, which is kind of crazy. Uh, mm. cause my dad wanted me to like, you know, give a oil painting workshop there. Yeah. Um, but oh, you know, wow. after COVID, yeah. everything just kind of shut down. Right. Sure. So yeah. Um, would you still consider I mean, that? Honestly, I'm man, like other than like the mentorship that I'm about to release with Sentient, I actually might take a break from teaching for a while. I'm yeah. about to move to Los Angeles soon. Okay. Um, and I'm actually like, I was joking uh, about this with, uh, you know, a couple of friends of mine, like, um, in Portrait Society when I was there this year. But I was like, man, the Portrait Society about to like freaking like kick me out like any second now because I'm straying farther and farther away from like the fine art definition of like no like fine art representational art you know like yeah. i don't know if you guys seen the recent works that i posted but they're definitely not like you know just classical representational like no yeah. subjects right they're like freaking uh pop culture characters right i'm <laughs> like yeah. isn't that modern classic tale technically i guess so yeah <laughs> I mean, you can, guess, yeah you can then, still call or, that contemporary realism in a way yeah, i guess though so, yeah i mean like people will say well then that's illustration then. i'm like i mean i'm not an illustrator I, I still view them as fine art paintings right mm-hmm. but it's just like you know a different subject that it's like a subject that i you know i'm interested in yeah and I mean, recently I've been actually, my girlfriend, she's also, she's also an artist too. Um, She's a concept artist actually. And, but recently she's been like doing a lot of like, uh, like anime fan art. And it's actually really dope. Actually, I think um, that's actually done by her back there. Um, Oh, awesome. I'll I'll show you, I'll show you guys like her Instagram. Yeah, she has her Instagram. But we recently, I think in the like last six months, um, you know, started venturing into um, I guess convention selling, like going to anime expos, um, oh, nice. you know, anime conventions and <laughs> mm-hmm. selling at artist alleys. I basically was helping her sell because, you know, I guess I, I got, I trained my salesman skills, uh, salesmanship skills up 
from trying to get people into my atelier being mm-hmm. like no 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 trust me guys like this is gonna be good <laughs> you know so i was like used to like telling people but then again her products are really good too like her paintings are good so mm-hmm. it was easy to sell them um and it's so lucrative like i was um i was doing calculations on you know i mean the school that i'm with right now they're paying me really really well mm-hmm. um but it's like i'm doing a boot camp with them right now during the summer so i got to be there like you know monday to friday you know, that's why I said my schedule was like super hectic, but, yeah. you know, all the way from, you know, uh, till like the end of August, my schedule is going to be from nine to like four at San Francisco. Okay. Right. And you gotta try, the pay is like the really good. You know, it's like, it's almost like three figures per hour. It's like, it's really good. Right. Nice. But I just did a calculation after like we did an uh, anime expo, like in LA, we were just selling there for four days. And I'm like, man, in four days, I, we actually made almost as much as I would have made in this three months, every day, Monday to Friday, going teaching. And I was just oh, like, <laughs> wait, were you selling originals or prints? Um, well, prints, prints. Prints, yeah, right? Yeah. It was prints. Yeah, it was It was just prints. And yeah. It's the way it to was, go. It's really the way I'm to like, go. Mm-hmm. Yo, and then like, I was looking and I'm like, wow, there's like no oil painters here. So if I'm going, like, you know. Oh, you get the market cornered then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, I guess, <laughs> I guess I'll stand out. I don't know. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. and. Right. I, and I was like, wow, this is just like a nice break. I've been teaching for almost 10 years. I started teaching when I was like 16 years old. And it's, it's been, it's been too long. I, I just needed a break. So I feel like mm-hmm. after we go to LA, uh, we actually have shows already booked. Like I, uh, oh, nice. I'm going to start selling my work too. Uh, I have like one small convention coming up in August, actually the end of August, it's like this one day con, but then I also got accepted to Comic-Con Revolution. So mm-hmm. like, like I said, awesome. I'm slowly venturing into like that territory and slowly like you know leaving this like fighters kind of thing i mean i'm not leaving but it's like it feels that way a little bit to some people but of course, yeah i'm just of course that's that's it. That, the thing about that too i think it's like it, you know i think everybody gets lumped into like such a specific category that that mm-hmm. you you really can like stretch your legs yeah, and do you can. different it's, things like you can do you can paint and draw a little bit differently than you do another thing and, you know oh, yeah, and you don't have to be fit, like conform to <laughs> just a pure fine art i'm gonna paint I, some flowers you I, have know. A, I have a question for the both of you guys i'm not a part of the uh, portrait society like are they really that strict on subject matters not really i mean no okay. no yeah not, not really but i'm just saying because nobody really does it there either. yeah <laughs> it's it's yeah. kind of like unwritten like you just kind of follow like if, yeah oh. i mean it's I, yeah, there's I, no I nobody say don't do that you know yeah i mean they're not like that though but like uh no well, one really does. Yeah, I mean, like every year they do have like this thing called a six by nine mystery sale that they mm-hmm. have like past winners contribute. Um, so I contributed every year, and it was this yeah. year actually. I told Kong Ho because she was she was talking to me about like um uh about my paintings. Like he's like, yo, I really like what you're doing. I'm like, yo, like I'm about to like. Do you think I should like submit something different, like a little bit more pop culture for next year's six by nine? Should I like submit like Spider Man or something? He's like, yo, if you do that, I'll buy it. I'm like, oh really? Okay, cool. <laughs> so I actually that's awesome. I okay, well, you do that, I'll do that too because I submit to that. I'll I'll do something like that myself. So. Oh my god, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, just yes. Don't, don't let me let start growing. <laughs> yeah, get everybody involved. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm you know so that's kind of like what I when I'm kind of like that's why I you know when you guys ask me I'm like I don't really have like gallery shows coming up or anything like that because mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm actually trying to like you know diversify and like kind of break away and also just try, try different things you know what yeah I mean? yeah, like, yeah. Like, that's i think <laughs> that's smart of you especially you've been you kind of just hit the ground running with teaching too like you just jumped right into it and it seems yeah. like from what i understand your schedule is really packed i mean like you just said but i mean even from all of your your studio and everything like it I can imagine wanting to take a break. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been, you know, it's been hectic. I mean, I, I really enjoy teaching. Actually, one of my students, I started teaching her when she was like 14. She's 18 now. And uh, she just oh, got, wow. um, she got accepted. Into, uh, I mean, they actually called her up uh, to be in, featured in the 21 under 31 article in Southwest, uh, Southwest Art Magazine. So that's, awesome. like, that's what nice. I was uh, featured in, like literally four yeah, years ago. So this yeah. comes full circle. Like I was <laughs> featured in that. Like when I started teaching you and after four years, now you're featuring that. So it's like four year run. I'm like, like, that's cool. Pass the torch a little mm-hmm. bit there. That's cool. Yeah. So I I mean, for me, I, I definitely feel like I, I, I actually didn't think I would start teaching like, you know, uh, younger students. Like mm-hmm. at, at the beginning, I just wanted something easy. I just wanted to teach like students wanted to learn. I thought that was just going to be slightly older students, but you know, students like her kept coming to me and being like, I really want to learn this after, after they see what I was doing, after they see what could be possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they just kept proving me wrong. I'm like, wow. Like, I tell all my students this. I'm like, you guys are, like, literally 10 times better than me when I was your age. 
So I can't even imagine what you guys are going to be like, <laughs> like, you know, when you're my yeah. age, that's crazy. Like I'm excited to see that. Like I tell them, mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, like for what, why I teach is like, I, I never want people to feel like, Oh, you know, like you're my student. I'm a teacher. Right. So you'll be good. You'll never be as good as me. I mean, I met teachers who are like, that. I just, I do oh, not yes. like that. I tell my students, I'm like, yo, I'm like the tutorial stage. You should easily be able to surpass me because I'm literally telling you everything I do. I'm giving you everything. I'm leaving yeah. no stones unturned. So um, surpassing me should not be an issue whatsoever. You should surpass me within like a year. Like that that should be your goal, right? I'm the tutorial stage. There's bigger fishes out there. Like I want you guys to like grow up. Like I tell them, I'm like, I want to take your take your classes in the future. That's what I want to do. You know, I want to yeah. learn from you guys, right? So that's my goal for as a teacher, at least. Yeah. Did you start it as awesome. like more of a community building than the actual like? Yeah, uh, I, I really to... enjoy building yeah like even back in my club, i remember um they didn't really have a portrait model session so i just i, I just like set my set it up myself you know <laughs> like even after i left they still kept go, kept it going right and oh you know, that's and, awesome and even back then uh it was in baltimore so my mm-hmm. place was like super big it was like man i was like over a thousand square feet and we were only paying like maybe a thousand two hundred a month mm-hmm. uh in, in total so it was like 600 months it was like super cheap to live there right and right. i got a model i got a model chair i got a model stand i just like invite people over just to like study the model with me like every nice. week you know just like it could be professors it could be classmates like whoever wants to come you know like yeah, I, yeah. I really enjoy just kind of being in a community i feel like i'm much more of a community painter in a way where like if i just i can't paint by myself Mm-hmm. just alone i gotta talk to someone when i'm painting it's super weird like to the point where sometimes i would even like go on like you know go online go on discord or whatever and i start a painting and just like talk to people randomly like you know on there <laughs> but no, i think it yeah. makes perfect sense i mean rodney is kind of the same thing that is to really? you to a community like uh we especially in the pandemic and whatnot we'll just do random like weekly uh little online uh, workshop sessions, you know, and those are probably one of my more productive days just because it kind of takes yeah. off, it takes my mind off like that. I don't know. I could, I could definitely focus a lot more just kind of talking nonsense with him, making stupid jokes. And yeah, definitely. I don't, I don't know. It, it does uh, help with the work process too. So no, it makes perfect sense. I 100% yeah. agree with that. Yeah. 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 I, I think we, we both work. <laughs> we would get very much in a, a hole and like a black hole of uh, working and being by ourselves. And <laughs> during the uh-huh. pandemic, we're like, why don't we meet up and actually work together a little bit and, and just see, you know, just hang out. And then we started inviting more people like, well, if you want to join mm-hmm. us, come on, you know, and uh, it was actually a pretty fun, good, good, a good way to like reconnect with everybody, especially with uh, Rebecca being so isolated. Also, Rodney, it's, awesome. not, it's not the pandemic, it's pandemic. Get it right. <laughs> the pa- oh, the pandemic. It's yes. The pandemic. Yeah. According to Shannon Vaught. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pronounce it correctly, mister. Yeah. <laughs> so I know your your parents had quite a bit of influence on you, especially your your dad being an art instructor. Do you think that's um affected how you teach? Um yes, it taught me to teach better because my dad was not a good teacher. Um oh. he's the type of guy that would <laughs> He tried teaching me and actually I'm glad that he didn't try to teach me that much because it's like, he refused to teach me actually at the beginning, even, you know, like, because he's like, I don't want him to get too influenced by me because the way he teaches, I'm glad he did that because the way he teaches, like he would literally just have me sit there. He would sit there and he would do one stroke and he would make me do one stroke and just copy him like monkey see monkey do. Oh. And then at the end of the day, we might have a good painting, but I have no idea how we got there. I was like, yeah. I'm just like copying how he mixes his colors. Like I'm just, but I have no, he doesn't explain anything. And it's like, and you know, he did that with me like one to two times. And I was like, I, I'm not learning anything. This is boring. Like it, I, mine's just look like a sloppier version of yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, it was, it was, it's so, I mean, for me, that's why I always feel like, um, I never, you know, whenever I teach, I never teach, tell students like the answers. Like sure. Some of my students are annoyed by that. Like I will always tell them like every time I critique them, I never even look at their painting. I just look at them. I'd be like, okay, well, if I was looking at your painting, this is what I would be thinking of. Step one, like question one, question two, question three, and just have them go through these steps. And usually they will be able to answer it themselves because I feel like it's kind of like that, that quote where it's like, teach a man, like you give a man a fish, it's for a day, yeah. mm-hmm. the man a fish, you know, I think. For me, I like to go a step even above that. Like, teach a man uh, or tell him why it's good to fish, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because even if you teach him how to fish, he might not even want to do it. 
Right. You got to like get to the core, right? So how inspire him to fall in love with the act of fishing mm-hmm. before you even teach him how to do anything. That yeah. way he's just seeking that information out. You know what I mean? So well, yeah. that's kind of like, you just find a deeper meaning in the process too. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. That way it's like, then, you know, like, cause I, I never, you know, like I never want my students to like feel like they're relying on me, like, or mm-hmm. feel like, Oh, I, I'm the gatekeeper. They need to ask me like, Oh, is this good? Is this bad? I, mm-hmm. Like, you're the, you're the one in charge. I'm just here to give an opinion, you know? Like, I'm just here to lead you to the right way, but I'm not going to tell you exactly how to get there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, for my dad, so that's kind of, you know, his influence. I mean, of course, you know, I grew up around him. Like, there was a lot of art, but um, it's, like, almost negative even because, like, I always associated, like, realism with, like, old people because, you know, he was kind of old, so right. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I didn't, didn't want to do it. Um, I actually think I was actually more positively influenced by my mom. Uh, really? Because she oh. taught me the business side of art, which I feel yeah. like not a lot of people in the art world know. Even if they're really good, I feel like people are still getting screwed over financially and on the business side of things, right? We, so my we mom constantly talk about that on here. Yeah, for sure. Hmm? It's, we, oh, we, yeah, we talk about that the business side of it. Yeah, all the, time, the business just side, how like yeah, it is. you know, just like carrying, like how because I feel like art, the art itself, like the physical art, I think that's only like maybe. 60 percent right or even 50 percent the other 40 to 50 percent that's like you that's like you as a business like how do you carry yourself how do you present yourself because Mm -hmm. yeah uh, you know your art isn't just your your product isn't just the art but yourself is also you yourself are also the product you know what i mean so yeah um i I mean like my mom like really disciplined me she helped my dad with his sales like he was Mm -hmm. not making any sales back when they were like dating um at the beginning she was the one that freaking like went to the gallery behind his back with his paintings and she's like hey and then you know she talked them up and then like they ended up selling it for like thousands and thousands of dollars and he's like wow you know so she was almost like his manager for a bit yeah you know? yeah um, a good she was woman traveling the world with him man yeah yeah she was traveling the world with him looking at galleries and museums so she herself had a very high like you know she understood art it wasn't just like if you showed like a regular mom like a piece of painting like mm-hmm. they'd be like oh that's cute or that's great oh well, that looks so real you know she was like wow i really like how you know you know how you utilize the colors here i really like the composition like she actually knew what she was talking about even though she herself didn't paint or draw i mean she's trying to learn right now actually i'm actually i'm actually teaching her right now because she wants to retire in italy and play and paint there uh um, awesome but, that's amazing yeah <laughs> i mean for me when i was a little kid she would have me like as soon as i came back from china i was 15 years old and 15 16 and she made me make a website she made mm-hmm. me like start making business cards she drives me to galleries and she makes me like you know go in and talk to the gallery owners and come back with like a phone number or come back with some kind of relevant you know like she forced me into like these like situations where i kind of had to you know carry myself in a more professional manner and you know so that that's why i felt like i was a lot better prepared than some of my peers you know going to college because mm-hmm. my resume was already like you know, like yeah. Uh, yeah. Just from all that experience. Yeah, and that's ready. why I felt like I was able to navigate myself a little better after graduation. I was like, able to go immediately into just you know, starting my own business and all that stuff, like in terms of like teaching, in terms of school, in terms of all, all that. So I, I think it's, I, I got to thank her because like she was the one that really taught me a lot of those values, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my dad's just there just because, you know, like art, right? So he introduced me to the idea of art, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's really that's super fascinating. That's awesome that you get yeah. that first, especially that's such a early age. You have mm-hmm. such a great foundation laid, and uh, I still feel like I have no idea what's going on with <laughs> the business side. Sometimes I'm like, "What am I doing? I, I, I got to figure out a better way to market and, and like network." And it's a tricky thing. It's a very it is tricky so thing. challenging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very challenging. Yeah, and I learn more on a like a daily basis. I mean, it's just an ever. It's like an endless learning opportunity to, to yeah. figure it out. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah. well, so that's great. Though. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I know there's so many different opportunities nowadays mm-hmm. versus 10 or 20 years ago. So, mm-hmm. Wait, so, so when, you, when you came back from China and your mom was uh, teaching you all these, uh, the system, mm-hmm. the mechanism behind the business and the self, we already uh considering being an artist because you kind of mentioned that you were still iffy about that side of things yeah 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 that's a good question no i i i wasn't i was a rebel like i i (laughs) i I didn't want to do any of that because like for me i was more interested in like in like dancing like i don't know if you guys know but i'm into like dancing like street dancing like i was more interested in that yeah i was more interested in like you know video games 
and girls, like, you know, all those things. <laughs> I was not interested in like yeah. freaking painting. And even then I didn't know how to paint. I was drawing. That's why I felt so awkward going to those galleries because right. I was just showing them like academic drawings. Like, you know, they were like, that's cute. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Well done. But we can't sell that here or in this like modern art gallery, like mm-hmm. uh, a cast drawing in <laughs> graphite, you know, like it's great, but no one's going to buy that. And, you know, so I, I remember actually, um, like what when I was when I came back here, I was just doing art, like I said, pure narcissism because I I, I just enjoyed people saying they like my work. Uh I went to Micah mm-hmm. undecided, like I was undeclared. I was like an undeclared major. Uh and for the first year I was just fooling around. I, I just was like messing around. I was taking a bunch of random, those like random foundation first year classes. Mm-hmm. And I was just doing whatever. I was trying to like, you know, utilize, use my skills to kind of carry me through those like assignments, right? Like, right. you know, we get something and I try to still imbue like some of like the technical foundations I, I have to make it look better. Like mm-hmm. it was more like a crutch than anything. Yeah. Um, and the second year, actually, I was like, I, I got into like, just looking, watching like those animations, like 3D animations. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually, I, I was an animation major actually the second year. <laughs> Um, that's, awesome. funny. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I actually graduated with the uh, computer animation degree from the uh, academy. Really? Wow. I, yeah. Uh, I only yeah. started painting after I graduated and I was working on my uh, portfolio wow. uh, for, you know, with my my Maya and ZBrush and all that stuff. And after I finished it, I, something hit me. I'm like, I hate this. And I just dropped everything <laughs> yeah. and started painting and yeah. drawing again because that was, that was the thing that I enjoyed the most through school, the foundation class and all that stuff that actually learned an early part of it and i'm like why didn't i just continue doing this and, yeah yeah definitely you want to actually know something like i was in that yes. class but i was also in like this foundation like second year i was in the animation class i was in 2d animation which is fun i i knew how to draw so i was actually able to make oh, some 2D stuff animation. With it. okay okay yeah, the yeah. animation was cool they taught us like the old school like you know with like the mm-hmm. light cell light box. that was really yeah. cool i really yeah, like yeah. that um that That's actually cool. made me want to go into animation but then 3d animation hit and i was like whoa what is this like we were learning <laughs> maya and I was like, I'm not going to comment on the teaching, but I didn't really, you know, I wasn't able to really learn a lot. And also, like, I felt like it was mm-hmm. less art and more engineering in a way yeah, where that's... And I was like, man, I hate school. I hate like mm-hmm. math. I hate like, you know, <laughs> why, why am I doing this? Um, and then one day, actually, you want to know something? Actually, it was um, I was taking like this one art, like drawing class right mm-hmm. I, I took one drawing class every semester to make myself feel better mm-hmm. <laughs> because i could still do that yeah, and like, mm-hmm. our drawing class took us to um this uh took us to dc one day this mm-hmm. is the beginning of the second semester uh at the beginning of the second year so okay. it was like first year the first week of like you know or the second week of my sophomore year being animation major mm-hmm. we went to dc we went to the national portrait gallery and you know, I was dead tired that day because I was partying up all night the night before. So I was running I mean, on no sleep. Else? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I was running on no sleep. Like I was so tired. I was literally like, it was me and my friend. Uh, we were walking through the gallery, like, and then we were looking through the president portraits. I was like so bored yeah. that literally I was like just doing this thing, like you know, I was like, resting on his backpack, and he was walking. I was just like sleeping while I was walking, <laughs> and then all of a sudden he was like, "Hey." look look here like this is a really cool painting and i was like i don't want to see i don't care about george washington i don't care about any of that mm-hmm. like i don't care about painting because i didn't know how to paint so i didn't care about the oil paintings because they didn't interest me um but he's like no no no, just check this out so i i looked up mm-hmm. i looked to my right and it was sergeant's uh spanish dancer painting oh nice like, oh yeah right in front of me and i was like whoa like, I was like oh. it was such a good <laughs> painting like to yeah the point where I, it woke me up i mm-hmm. was awake I was, I was asleep, but then I was awake. Like it was, it, and I was downing Red Bull the whole day and it did not work. That painting <laughs> woke me up and I was like, man, I think I stood in front of it for a good 20 minutes. Just like, mm-hmm. just yeah. looking at all the different, you can't tell from, I never look at Sargent paintings on Google images, by the way. They do not look good. Oh, um, it's, it's um, not the same at they all. They do not no. look good. No, I was so, I, I didn't, I was so disappointed when I looked up that painting because I was trying to show my parents that mm-hmm. painting and i looked it up on google images i'm like this is not the same painting like there no way like the lights in the mm-hmm. google image was just flat but in, yeah. in person you could see the reds yellows and blues within the oh like, yeah 
There's yeah. so much in that painting that's happening. Mm-hmm. I, I've done the same thing where I sat like half an hour in front of it when yeah, my wife just, and I went there yeah. and it was just like, oh my God. It was, it all, it was crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then I was just saying, man, so when I went back to the school, the very same day, I went to the art store. I bought my first oil painting supplies. I'm like, okay, if I can just recreate like 0.1% of that, mm-hmm. yo, I think this will be worth it. So that's what I kind of did. And I took my first painting class uh, in sophomore year. And they wanted to put me into painting too. And I was like, no, no, no. I don't know anything about painting because they were looking at my drawings. I'm like, no, I don't know anything about painting. Put me in painting one, right? With all the beginners because I was a beginner. I didn't know how to paint. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I mean, of course I knew how to draw. So it cared me and I was able to make, you know, some, I guess, good paintings. But, it, um, and I guess I started, you know, I didn't have a studio. I didn't want to paint in my dorm. So mm-hmm. uh, the story was, uh, this is around the middle of the first semester. I usually would sneak into one of those empty classrooms in the fine art building, oh, nice. you know, and I would like work there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was like nobody there. They had a big screen yeah. TV. I would. And what I did on the big screen TV was I would actually project, you know, interviews, like Jeremy looking interviews, Stephen Asale interviews, like, you know, where those in- like just to get me inspired were like, I know yeah, Vincent yeah. Desiderio was like half of like hour, hour long videos. I would just project that on a big screen just to get inspired yeah. while I was painting. Um, and one day I remember I was waiting for one of the classrooms to clear. And mm-hmm. then one of the the painting chair, the chair of the painting department, um, saw my work, mm-hmm. um, came up to me. I didn't know who he was. And he saw my work and he was like, oh, my God, like, yo, you should. Oh, I, like he was so excited. He's like, I can't wait to have you in my class when you're a senior. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're a painting major, right? I'm like, no, I'm a no. He's like, are you a drawing major? I'm like, no. It's like a uh, sculpture major. I'm like, no. He's like, what are you? I'm like, I'm, I'm an animation major. And he's like, what? And then he looked at my painting. He's like, listen, he's like, we'll give you more scholarships if you come, come to this department, you know? Oh. Um, so I was like, okay. Uh, and I took it and I transferred into being a painting major for like, you know, the last half of sophomore year into junior and then senior year. So that's, and then like during junior year, that's when I, you know, got, uh, my first oil painting workshop opportunity and I started teaching oh. workshops and I started like, you know, entering competitions, selling works and mm-hmm. selling paintings. Senior year, I got like the Portrait Society Award. Uh, like they got, they gave me like a certificate of excellence. Oh, like yeah. senior year. That was kind of crazy because I was like on stage with a lot of the people that I was like copying and studying. I'm like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah that, that would be so crazy. true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like literally two years ago, I was like studying them on YouTube and but that was and then after that i was like you know i think around junior year actually was when i actually fell in love with it like i wasn't doing it just for narcissism anymore like i was really doing it because i enjoyed it you mm-hmm. know um and then it just kind of spiraled from there right and here we are now like it's been yeah six seven years now <laughs> that is amazing i love your origin yeah. story it's very like <laughs> straight out of a movie kind of a scenario oh no i don't know <laughs> yeah. it's boring honestly it's <laughs> no, no way yeah um, I have a question. So going into some more of your teaching, tell us about the Vision X conference. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, it's a really cool conference, actually. And um, it's I'll tell you a little bit about Vision X now. I can I guess I tell you a bit about how I even like got with them for some people yeah. who might want to know, right? They're really good people, they've been treating me really well. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's a really cool online program where uh they're just man, I I like they, this is the second year they're doing it. The first year they did it, um, I I was like with them at the beginning because you know they first let in like the Trukel Pro team members, and then they also let in the Sentient Academy faculties. I was both, so I was let in immediately when they were still like building the website up, and I was like, "What is this?" And they're like, "Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. Just make an account." I'm like, "Okay." Like, <laughs> we're like, I was like, "What is this? Like some marketing? Like some business marketing thing?" I really didn't know what it was. Nobody knew what it was, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and yeah, they just like got so many artists to come. And I think it's like a super cool opportunity. It's like, um, because I think it's different than, you know, like Portrait Society or like, you know, CTNX, like, you know, Portrait Society for like fine artists, CTNX for Lightbox for like um, illustrators and concept artists, because mm-hmm. it's kind of them getting both of these yeah. people and more okay. together in one spot. So there's like top people like Jeremy Lipkin, Daniel Keyes, like, you know, coming, Jeff Hine coming, um, you know, to, to in the fine arts side. But then you get people, you know, coming, um, you know, in the, in the concept art side, like, you know, Nathan Fouts, like, you know, they got, I, I know, like, before they got Proko, they got, like, Bobby Chu. They got, like, a lot of, like, you know, these, you know, 
digital concept artists too. Yeah. And I feel like for them, they're trying to bridge it because I, I think they're smart. They, they, they understand that the art world is going in a way where, you know, if you want the traditional art to kind of, you know, thrive, mm-hmm. it's got to, you know, partner together with the yeah. mainstream digital art media because before it's been so separate, right? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like I feel like, you know, people who learn concept art don't really know about ateliers and the people who are in ateliers don't really know about concept art. So for them, they're trying to like marry these, like merge and collaborate, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's just it's just a really, really cool um opportunity. And they got so many people to come and they're they're really doing their best to make sure that it's a good oper- like a good experience for viewers too. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, for me, I remember they actually flew me out to Utah. I mean, to film like this, uh, vid- like film a few videos for them, but also they hooked me up with a lot of good equipment too. They nice. really wanted to make sure that, you know, it's like people who are presenting on Sentient and Vision X are having like state of the art, you know, live streaming and all that stuff. So then the audience, the viewers, students can get the best experience. And mm-hmm. um, I mean, just to give you an idea, I remember I went to their HQ. They actually have an HQ and they have like open model sessions. And I was like, okay. I was blown away, not from, okay, first of all, their HQ is amazing. Like, it's like, I've never seen so many high tech cameras, like on a big stage. It was, it was so cool. Um, but, you know, they also have open model sessions and they have, um, they have like easels that they provide, like these wooden easels that they provide for all the students. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing that really tripped me out. This is where I think they really care. Every easel had like a portable light for the students. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's not expensive to do that, but like, it's just the thought of yeah. having that. I'm like, wow, that's, that's amazing. You guys really care. Like, yeah, there's a lot of detail in that. Like, that's awesome. That's an attention to detail that, you know, people like me notice because, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's an issue a lot of times when I go to a studio, I can't barely see what I'm doing because it's oh, so dark. 100%. So yeah. they're mm-hmm. thinking about the students. Like, I'm like, hey, that's, they don't have to do that, but they do. And, you know, that's why I'm, you know, that, so that's basically what Vision X is. So, I mean, um, I guess, this is going to be coming out after vision X. So I'm not going to plug like my discount code or anything like that, but, um, but it, it's still pretty cool. So if you guys ever want to check it out or, you know, next year mm-hmm. you can do that. Um, but they actually, the people who started vision X, I don't know if you guys know, are the people who created sentient Academy. So it, yeah, it was uh, Brian Mark Taylor and yeah. Keith Wong. Yeah. Yeah. These two guys, like they, they started, uh, they, they first started sentient Academy, which is like this online art school. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and then they decided to use that as like a platform to kind of like trampoline themselves into creating Vision X. Right. Okay. Um, and I guess um, I, I guess I I don't really I, I haven't really told anybody this too much. I guess I can like say here, uh, tell you guys, uh, tell whoever is like watching this. I actually almost quit art uh, during the start of the pandemic. Like oh, really? I was about to throw in the towel. Yeah, I was about to throw in the towel. I was about to like throw out all my paintings, throw out all my supplies. Um, no. I was about to just, I was like looking <laughs> online, being like, yo, it's, it's like Uber hiring or is like, is there any like, you know, I never had a nine to five job before. So I was like, you know, I, I didn't. We, I, we just burned out or? It, it was because of, of the pandemic. Um, mm-hmm. be, before the pandemic, um, I was so focused on teaching. I, you know, I was teaching, yeah. this, you know, I, I built up the atelier. So I, I know we went from zero students to like, I think, you know, at the peak, right before the pandemic, I had all, like over a hundred students, mm-hmm. right at the atelier, and wow. it was making good money. It, we were, it was doing really good. And the issue was, I've been so focused on teaching, and it was mainly just like you know, bar drawings and you know, like cast drawings, all that stuff. That mm-hmm. I didn't really have time myself to paint that much, to the okay. point where I almost kind of lost the passion a little bit. So when the pandemic hits, um, I lost ninety five percent of my students overnight. Because all of them were panicking. So they were like asking for refunds. They were like, yo, like I can't do classes. Like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, you know how people were freaking out. It was uh, at the peak of the of the toilet paper buying days where people were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, people were totally. freaking <laughs> out, right? It, they were freaking out so much. And, you know, um, so I lost like literally 95% of my income overnight. And that is oh, very stressful for someone I would, who... I would imagine, you know, yeah. Right? that have like no safety net behind like you mm-hmm. know like totally, I, I think I've yeah. been my parents so like I literally have no safety net you know what I mean mm-hmm. so you know and after that I was like man I should I mean maybe I should paint right so mm-hmm. I tried painting 
I didn't know what to paint. I just painted a self-portrait and it was just complete garbage. Like it was so bad. I was like, oh my God, I forgot how to paint. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, this is not even worth it. I tried another painting. I'm like, this is so bad. I was like, you know what? Forget it. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Like I was like, I, so my easel, my brushes, they were just hanging here for mm-hmm. a good month. Like for a good month, I was doing nothing. I gained like 30, 40 pounds in that one month. Um, it was crazy. Oh, wow. yeah, I was just like eating, like I was like guzzling pizza and like donuts and like fast food. I was just in my bed every day. Like I had enough savings that I could kind of, you know, laze around and not mm-hmm. really work for a couple of months. Uh, so I was just literally in bed watching movies, playing video games, which I have not let myself do since like 2000. 14 actually um <laughs> and then to the point where i think around the third week i, I mean because i live with my girlfriend and you know, mm-hmm. she i mean we've been together for like almost seven years now so you know so she's been with me for a while and oh and, yeah you know she i was like yo why are you not calling me out on this this is disgusting um and this is why i'm really grateful for her because she just looked at me all confused she's like wait i thought this is you just taking a break i'm like what i was like no i'm i i quit i'm quitting and she's like oh, really? I thought you were just taking a break. Like, you deserve a break. And I'm like, wait, really? She's like, yeah, we'll bounce back. Like, I know you'll bounce back. I'm like, you think so? And she's like, yeah, why don't you just take one more week of break? Just un- like unfiltered break. Just like, don't feel bad that you're taking a break break. And I'm like, because yeah. I've been feeling bad, right? I was like, feeling yeah. bad that I was um, late yeah, around. No, no. So mm-hmm. I, I completely get that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is why I tell this story sometimes to some of my students who feel burned out because I'm like, listen, man, like, so like taking care of your own mental health is so important right so yeah i i just took that last week break i just was unfiltered man i was like parting it up like i was just like you know what whatever who cares you know mm-hmm. life is short like i'm just gonna party it up and i just got it out, out of my system and then you know the very next week i remember um i was just scrolling through instagram i didn't even let myself go on instagram because i was just so depressed like looking at everyone's work and i'm like man, I'm not, I'm not going to like do anything, right? Like I, I mm-hmm. can't do anything. And I found one of my, you know, now he's like one of my really close friends, Jared Brady. Uh, he also teaches with me in Centene. He's also going to be on Vision X Live. Jared Brady, uh, his Jared Instagram Brady. is Jared Brady Art. Yeah, I could check him out. Uh, yeah. But he, I, I saw him and I remember I saw his work before and it was okay. Sorry, Jared, if you're hearing this. It was okay. It was okay. <laughs> like, uh, but then... He did this thing. He did this challenge called the Strata Easel Challenge. Like the Strata yes. Challenge. Yeah. Uh, it's a challenge where you're painting from life mm-hmm. every day for 31 days. And it was hosted by Brian Mark Taylor of Sentient, of Strata, right? Oh. Um, and I saw him doing this challenge and I was like, oh my God. Like, you got so good. Like, he went from okay to literal, oh, whoa, is this... Is this Jerry or is this Daniel Keyes? This is crazy. You're so good now. That's awesome. And I was like, man, I was actually more impressed by just the consistency. And I was like, I need that consistency. I'm not working right now. Like I can afford to kind of like take a little bit of a, you know, challenge, right? So I did the challenge, even though they weren't even opening the challenge. I just did it on a whim. Like it wasn't even a, like, you know, they have specific timelines for the challenge. I didn't even read into that. I just, you know, I just painted something from life. and I just hashtag Strata challenge. Strata mm-hmm. challenge day one, like even though there was no day one going on. Um, <laughs> and it was just, you know, it was just like random stuff. And I remember I painted it at like just like a one hour painting and just kind of get myself in there. It was a struggle. That one painting, I remember I had to literally walk away after three brush strokes because I was feeling fatigued, mm-hmm. you know, from painting. I was like, man, I can't do this. Like, you know, so I go for a walk, play a video game for one hour, come back, three brush strokes. Go back, mm-hmm. play a few more video games for a few hours, come back, three brush strokes. Um, that paint that one painting, I think in reality it only took me like maybe 20 minutes to do, it took me a good whole day, like from morning to night, mm. just to finish. It was a small one too. It wasn't even big, yeah. it was like a loose all the perma. That's how worn out I was. Um, mm-hmm. and it was hard. It was like trying to work out again, you know? Oh, yeah. Um mm-hmm. and but then like week day two, it was still hard. Day three, it was still hard, but you know, just like working out, the more you do it, consistency builds. Mm-hmm. And when mm-hmm. consistency builds, you know, it gets easier and you want to do it to the point where I'm waking up early every day painting. And I remember day uh, 15, I did this one painting of a lion sculpture. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was from a photo reference I took, which I also found out later. You're actually not even supposed to like 
paint from photo references. You're supposed to paint from life. So I was doing the Scottish challenge completely wrong. So um, rules are then, meant to be made up for you for your you, needs. Uh, version of the Scottish challenge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, but then I did that lion painting, and then Sentient saw that they mm-hmm. liked it. Uh, and Keith of Sentient, he's like you know the co-founder of Sentient. With uh, he's the guy who does all the business side of things. He he reached out to me basically, mm-hmm. and he's like, hey. We really like your painting. We like we love for you to give a demonstration for a sentient YouTube account. I'm like, yo, you're not sentient. What are you talking? Because like he he emailed me from his like private account. Uh-huh. And you know, I was like, nice try. Cause I knew who Sentient was. I was looking at their yeah. videos. I was using his re- I was using their reference folder folders, and I was like, you're not sentient. I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. understand. Like, you can chill with that. <laughs> but um but then late, later, they re, like, you know, he emailed me. I mean, he messaged me again from the Sentient account. He's like, no, 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 we're, it's actually <laughs> us. I'm like, oh, then yeah, let's do it. And then I did that. And then after that, they were, um, and at that time, I didn't even have a following on Instagram. Like, I only had like two, 3,000 followers. I didn't have a huge following that time. This is around like two years ago. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember after my demo, I guess he liked it. And he was like, hey, can you, you know, do a portrait course for us, like a portrait atelier course for the Centene Academy. And mm-hmm. we like to sign you on as a, one of our faculty members, as our instructors. And then, man, that was so nerve wracking. I had such, you know, imposter syndrome because that time they got people like, you know, you know, they got people like Josh Clare, like Alvin Pasoka. They got people like, you know, Michael Mom, Howard. Like, I'm like, you guys have all those people. Why are you asking me? <laughs> like, this is a very bad business move on your end. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't think you guys, you know, like I was like, and also Albin and Josh, they already had a portrait course made for Sentient. So I was like, everything they're teaching is probably what I'm going to teach, but like better. Like, why, why do you want me to like do it? But, you know, they, they really, I guess, believed in me and they, but I didn't believe in myself. And they're like, no, we, we see what you're capable of we see what you can bring to the table and we want you to like join us like we want to collaborate we want us to like work together and i was like all right it's your call whatever it's your (laughs) your loss your money your time i'm like all right i'll do it um and i did it and you know like and after that you know they signed me on and then after that they got me sponsorship from trakel and -hmm. then trakel got me sponsored you know it's a whole crazy thing snowballed into a whole it's just snowballed yeah it was it was all from that strata challenge that's i went from literally almost wanting to quit painting Mm -hmm. and literally within two months i was like doing it was crazy i was getting sponsorship from trakel and it was like it was it was um yeah so that's why i feel like you know life Sometimes it's kind of like, I tell this to my students sometimes too. It's like, I feel like life is like kind of like an arrow. Sometimes you got to like, it's going to pull you back. Right. Mm -hmm. Where you feel like, oh, and it's going to launch you forward, you know, just before you even know. So that's like kind of how I approach life now. And I'm really thankful to the people I said. That's why when you mentioned vision, I was like, man, I got to tell the story because I got to, I got to thank them for what they helped me through because without them, I would probably not talk to you guys right now. I would probably be driving for Uber right now. So no, no disrespect to people who drive for Uber, of course, but I'm just saying that's probably going to be my full-time job now. Like, you know, if it wasn't for them. So they kind of saved me, honestly. So yeah, <laughs> you guys, like, I really appreciate what they're doing for the community. That's awesome. For yeah. one, I'm glad that you continued too. Yeah, um, same. I feel like everybody goes through that stage, especially early yeah. on or even mm-hmm. later in parts of life. Just, you know, this, you start kind of, lacking self-confidence or just believing that things were going to take off just taking a lot longer so i'm glad mm-hmm. that you uh, shared that story i think a lot of people could definitely reflect on that and i hope people yeah. can reflect mm-hmm. I, I, hope, I hope that can help someone else out there who is going through a hard time right now because mm-hmm. man that was definitely me so yeah <laughs> way, yeah uh, at what point I, in that challenge did you feel like that re uh kindling of your motivation was it in the process that you're painting or more the final results that you had actually had where like oh yeah i forgot that i'm actually a good painter or more the joy that you love painting (laughs) it was the process Process? it was definitely the process yeah it was process because at the beginning it was the result and that's why i was miserable because the result wasn't what i wanted like Mm -hmm. it was looking not good but i think during like day eight or day nine I stopped caring about the results. And then when I stopped caring about the results, the result, of course, started looking better because it became right. less stiff and more, I guess, natural. But also I started just enjoying the act of, you know, putting brush strokes on. I started enjoying the act of painting. And I just, it made me 
like it made me it reminded me why I started I I I started getting the same spark that I did after seeing that first sergeant painting you know mm -hmm. it reminded me of like why I did why I'm doing even doing this in the first place right it's not because I'm good I'm not good I still don't think I'm good uh, you know like I, oh man you know, that's such malarkey yeah, you're yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no I mean you know for me I just do it because I enjoy it like I, I enjoy course. doing this this is just kind of yeah. like what you know Right. Like it relaxes me. It's kind of like yoga now. So it's like I, mm -hmm. I, I like doing it. Right. I like the process. Mm -hmm. I, I care more about process than result. I actually teach that way, too. I tell my students, too. I'm like, I don't care about the result. I care about your process because your process shows that you're learning something. Your result just yes, shows like, hey, exactly. it's a cool little, you know, piece. Right. But did you really learn as much as you can? Right. So yeah. I. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of how I approach things. Right. That's kind of nice for you too. With the initial part of the pandemic, it was kind of like your realization, your learning moment for you personally. And I'm I'm glad that I hate to say I'm glad that happened as a whole because that's a horrible thing to say for the yeah. Pandemic. No, but I mean, maybe but it was kind of essential in a sense. A lot yeah. of a lot, a lot of like silver. I mean, it was good for both me and my girl, right? Because yeah. uh, you know, uh, she was able to get a lot of opportunities. Like you know, before the pandemic, she was working, trying to work, like trying to get her portfolio up to date working mm -hmm. like receptionist job. Uh, but then after the, like during the pandemic, right. Yeah. A lot of like these schools, I'm going to put a little plug here for the school that got her, her opportunity, like brainstorm brainstorm okay. school led by oh, John yeah. Park and LA. They used to only have live action, like live classes. You got to be in LA to take their classes. Uh, mm -hmm. But when the pandemic hit, they can't do that anymore. So they, for the first time, or maybe for the first time in a long time, wherever they open up online classes mm -hmm. and she took that stimulus check and just, Blew it directly into brainstorm classes and S smart on her end. <laughs> yeah, literally that's after a good a, way to using it. <laughs> yeah, after like two three classes, she landed her first like concept art job, and now and then she got another, and then like now she's just doing this full time while awesome. selling her like freaking work, and it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I think she makes more than me right now. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. So I think I mean of course the pandemic is like horrible. Um. You know for a lot of reasons, but. I feel like, you know, there's with bad, there's also, you know, good too. I feel like there, with the negatives, there's also positive. So, you know, mm -hmm. of course, there's a lot of negatives that happened before us, like, you know, Absolutely. because of what happened, a lot of positives also happened. So I'm, you know, I felt like it was a necessary thing to kind of happen to, or else I feel like if a pandemic never happened, I, me and her probably would definitely not be in as good of a place as we are right now, which is kind of weird, but you know yeah it's weird it how that stuff it, works yeah yeah it definitely gave a lot of people the opportunity they didn't didn't have because of time strain and whatnot so yeah it's yeah. a weird weird thing to look at look back to and like i don't know um anyway. yeah, so, so much of my growth on instagram and and my following came through the pandemic like mm -hmm. uh, i think it just i i it really opened up a, and maybe step in back and like really see what was going on in life and uh yeah. just uh how it was affecting us which was really a, uh in a hard way like we got hit pretty hard with it and uh i just ended up completely changing how i worked and mm -hmm. i kind of got out of that richard schmidt style <laughs> that i was doing and and uh my school style which i was just posting a lot of schoolwork and and whatnot mm -hmm. you know too and yeah i just really think it it gave me the opportunity unknowingly to to evolve mm -hmm. in a way yeah, I think it's like honestly sometimes necessary, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, on. Uh, did you have something now, too? No. no. Oh, well, I was gonna next thing. Next thing. Yeah, I was gonna come back around to uh, being a trickle pro team artist. Tell us mm -hmm. like yeah. how you got there and like what that's like, what it looks like for you. Yeah, trickle. I love the people at trickle. Like Elizabeth and Courtney, they're like some of the best people I've ever met. Um, mm -hmm. Actually. Like I said, this whole thing, like like me with you, Rodney, I think it comes full circle because I remember um, this was when I first moved here. And when I started my atelier at, in 2018, this is before Sentient, this is before anything. This is when I was just, just doing me, right? And I didn't have a huge following or anything like that. Um, but then, you know, one day Trakel reached out to me saying, hey, we we noticed that you started a school. We, you know, we'd love to swing by, give you guys some free materials, say hi. And I'm like, I'm like a nobody. Why are you guys? what really and then like i was like are you serious and she's like and it was courtney too and i think she's like the person who's in charge of everything and she drove down personally um oh, wow. made a detour too it was like an hour detour she drove down just wow. to see me to give me free materials 
to just say hi. Like it wasn't, I didn't even, I don't even think she was there for like just business. She just wanted to say hi and just give me materials and be like, Hey, you know, like, I'm really happy to see you're doing this. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, you know, I like, you know, so that was my first impression of her. And, and this is 2018 and literally like, you know, like three years later, like, you know, when the pandemic actually like was like hitting. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, that's when, like, you know, I got together with Sentient. And then after that, Sentient, they were, like, partnering with Trakel. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I guess they were they were asking, you know, they were asking people, like, uh, oh, hey, who wants to, you know, wants to be with Trakel? And I was like, well, I really like Trakel. And then, like, Trakel, you know, I guess picked me out, too. And, you know, I, I still had to apply to be a member, too, like, a full team member. So I, I applied, right? I didn't think I was going to get it because... I was looking at all the other members. I'm like, dang, like Sean them, like those guys. I was like, yo, I'm not gonna get it. Like, I, I have two thousand followers. Like, what? Like, this is before I even like had much of a following. I was like, I'm not gonna get it. But they, they accepted me, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, awesome. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna bring too much publicity to you guys, but that's awesome. And then you know, they, <laughs> they like um, you're lost, they, but yeah. <laughs> but no, they're really cool. Like they, you know, they give me supplies and. um, they're giving me a lot of opportunities too. Um, they're uh, like for the pet portrait competition that they're hosting every year. You know, this year they made me the overall judge, and I was like, "Dang, that's so cool!" Like, yeah, that's right. That's amazing. <laughs> you know, that's a lot of pressure, but that's so cool. And then, like, I think me and Brian, Brian Mark Taylor, we're probably gonna. It's still in the works. Uh, I guess I'm giving, giving guys a lowdown right now. Mm. I mean, I didn't sign the, like an NDA, so I, could, I guess I have to talk about this. Uh, but they're, uh, <laughs> they're probably going to have another like competition where uh, Brian and our, I are going to both be the judges um, with Trakel, I believe. Yeah, Trakel, okay. where uh, it's going to be more like a sci-fi, science fiction kind of like oil painting or painting Ooh. competition. Ooh. Brian is going to judge like the that. landscapes. Yeah. I'm going to judge like the figures kind of subjects. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's in the talks right now. Um, I don't that's know awesome. when they're going to release that, but you know, whenever it is, maybe it's oh, after, man, that's maybe awesome. after the portrait competition. Yeah. So they're giving me a lot of opportunities and I'm like, man, I'm really grateful for them. And they've been with me and, you know, they, they're always so helpful. They're like, you know, um, and I love not just their brushes, but man, like uh, I can literally open a store up right now in my, like just with all the panels that they give me. Um, because yeah. I love side business. So yeah. All my paintings now are painted with their panels. Like, it's, yeah, okay. I like, love their panels. Yeah, their great. panels are so. I'm like, yo, I mean, y'all should start. Like, I know people know you for your brushes, but your panels are like, dang, like this is yeah. good. Like, why are people not freaking out more about your panels? Like, this is like a hidden gold mine. Like, you know, they're, they seriously be. are. Yeah, it's it's great. So they're great. Um, you know, I, I mean, is there anything specific you want to know? I, I feel like I just kind of brought, like generalized. Everything. No, that was great. You you gave us a lot there too. Like, or do you do um, like any education with them too? Like, are they do they have you like do classes or like demos or? Um, they have they have me do a demonstration. You can actually find it on YouTube. It's free. Like, you just type in Prakel Kai Kylan Q. Like, you can find it. It's it's free. It was a demonstration that I did with them. Um, I think there's a link on uh, our website too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That was fairly recently too, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. Was Wait, it on my website? Oh no, that's the one that I did with uh Vision Next. That's a different so, one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the one on the one that I did with them was me painting my pet guinea pig. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. the guinea pig. Yeah, yeah. Pet guinea pig. Yeah. So that was actually to promote the the pet portrait competition, right? Mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, like I mean, it was kind of stressful because like they were like hey you know this is your chance to show them why you're the judge and i'm like yeah I'm like, I'm like oh man that's so stressful yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, yeah. No pressure. An hour. <laughs> oh man like and apparently they tell me they have like thousands of entries i'm like oh dang like <laughs> i know i feel like it's just continuing to grow it seems like each year with that yeah so, they're, they're like doing you get your work cut out for you now. <laughs> I, I i really hope to collaborate with them some more especially when i move to la because i'll be closer to them um, yeah. and they're already collaborating. Like, I mean, this year, I mean, one of my good friends, uh, uh, Andrew Kadima, like he also got onto Trakel Pet Portrait, I mean, Trakel Protein. So, you know, he's with yeah. them now too. So I'm like, that's super cool. I think you guys actually interviewed with him. We Andrew, did. Andrew, Andrew yeah, Kadima. we did. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, yeah. I actually back. had him come to my high school to give a demonstration to my students. Oh, um, oh awesome. Yeah. That's <laughs> really cool. So we didn't, like I didn't know he was a super nice guy. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Super, super dope. So, you know, um, actually I think you guys interviewed a lot of people that, 
Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> you guys interviewed Monica, too, right? Monica. We did, yeah. Monica. Yeah, yeah. Monica. Yeah, Gibble, she yeah. was my, my underclassman. I was, okay. we were both at school together. Yeah, she was, I think, sophomore. Oh. I was a senior. I see her songs awesome. around the hallway, and I'm like, yo, dope work. <laughs> like, yeah, she, her work's amazing. Oh, yeah. um, Killer. There's, there's another, uh, well, the previous uh, interviewee was uh, Sh- Shannon Baugh. Mm, yeah, Baugh. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shannon Baugh. Yeah. They're, Sorry. They're Baugh. all super, super dope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, that's why I was like honored when you guys asked me. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, that's cool. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, we're honored too. Like, we're, we're honored that you said yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you agreed to be on a podcast about two idiots. So. It's, <laughs> Hey, takes, I mean that's 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 my vibe though. So that's, that's yeah, awesome. it takes a lot of cohonas. So. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. So, are you what? What's your medium for oil? I'm sorry. What's your brand for oil paints? Are you using Gamblin? Is that? Uh, I am. I am. Yeah. I am. I yeah. I am. Gamblin all do the you, way. Are you like have a thing with them, or is it just like that your preferred brand? They're just my preferred brand. Yeah. They're yeah. they're just my they're just my preferred brand. Yeah. Um, I mean, they do support me and everything I do, but like, they're just my support. I just like supporting them. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you think uh, you might eventually move away from like a la prima or do, do you think you want to stick with that specific technique down the road? Oh, I, I think I'm never going to go away from a la prima. Yeah. I feel like a la prima is like the... Yeah, what's I your think fascination the, about it? I think it's the closest thing that you can get to um, documenting something visually like mm-hmm. from the human experience because you know i mean really rendered paintings are cool and all but mm-hmm. that's not how we see things like we Very can't true. actually see the details you know what mm-hmm. i mean like yeah. if you're looking at yourself in the mirror you're you can't see all the pores or all the little hairs right i mean you can try but even when you try you, it's only like little you know what i mean yeah. right oh. a la prima i feel like it's the closest thing you can get especially if it's a really good olive perma like sergeant or zorn um mm-hmm. or you know like richard schmidt like you know or daniel keys or any of those people like i feel like that is the closest mm-hmm. thing you can get to the human experience of the artist's eye you know like you, you can did. experience the exact shape that they're seeing in terms mm-hmm. of abstraction because that's what we're seeing like if you go outside look at trees you're seeing shapes you're seeing abstract shapes it, mm-hmm. With a little bit of like, you know, maybe small shapes here and here to indicate detail, but you're not, you don't need to see the whole, whole detail. You know what I'm saying here? Uh, uh, so that's why I feel like uh, for Ala Prima, it, I like the immediacy of it. And I, 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 like the, I like the honesty of it, like the honesty of like what yeah. it looks like, right? I mean, not bashing people who are like doing like high. Oh, no, no, high no, 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 no. Because like that does take a lot of skills. But at least for me, first of all, I don't have patience to do that. I, I definitely <laughs> don't have enough patience to do that, but I mean, oh yeah, uh, it's me, crazy it's when somebody imp- writes like an individual wrinkle on a yeah, I don't know, crow's nest or what, like your finger. Yeah, like, whoa. I but, mean, that's super dope. You know, I really like works like that as well. I really appreciate works like that as well. But I think for me, it's also because I think I'm a dancer, so mm-hmm. I appreciate movement. Yeah. So there's a flow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good point. Things, you you lose movement in mm-hmm. in you know in replacement for high details, right? But mm-hmm. in our yeah. karma, you sense movement. There's rhythm and that that's actually what i usually strive for in my paintings i never worry about subject as much as i worry about the abstract rhythm and movement that the painting will convey like that's more of like what i'm thinking about as opposed to just like the details i never think about details actually in fact the only brush i i don't use any small brushes I, the, the, the smallest brush i use is like the number four or number six brush on my oh, paintings. Really? Yeah, I never really use any small brushes because I'm like, oh, nice. you know, like I don't see the small details, so I'll just paint whatever I see, you know? <laughs> the, the, the small brushes can get you in trouble really yeah. fast, too. Like, I think it's good to stay away from as much yeah, as you can. Yeah, <laughs> it, so, I'm just impatient. It just doesn't cover as much as I want it to. Yeah. And, you know, like, if, think, if I can't do it with the big brush, is it really necessary? Like, you know, like, it's just, right. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you think it tells more of a story about the subject because of, like, the emotional side of it? all the prima kind of portrays like a little bit of an abstract abstract uh way of conveying a, a subject instead of a super hyper realism i, that I does. definitely think so because i think like whenever i'm painting at least it's i, I don't think it's just about the subject mm-hmm. i also think it's about like you know the atmosphere yeah you know what yeah. i mean and mm-hmm. i feel like with all mm-hmm. prima you can paint atmosphere you can paint the movement of the atmosphere like you know what like rhythm are you feeling from looking at this Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I mean? there's like so much the, electricity to that. Like, yeah, that that immediacy, right? So even when I'm painting mm-hmm. from photos, like I'm still trying to pretend that hey, 
It's all, I, I make it really small mm-hmm. on my page. I don't zoom it out. I make it super small. So I feel as if like, you know, uh, I'm like trying to move around a little, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What will happen here? Oh, I moved some stuff. Did you, did you delete a question there? No, I moved it. Yeah. <laughs> I threw it into the, uh, <laughs> like it's gone. So we had, uh, we've got a few, uh, lightning round. Okay. Oh, are we going sure. straight to that? Okay. I think we should jump into that. Okay. You want to do it? Now, so do you want to take that? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna what we're gonna do basically is just we're gonna ask you a few questions like rapid fire, okay. and you just like shoot out an answer as quick as you can. First thing that comes to your mind, and okay, yeah, some of the, some of these are very straightforward. Some of these are very random. So gotcha. yeah, answer, okay. answer it however you like. Ooh, I hope I don't. <laughs> yeah, it might it might it might seem like a multiple choice question, but no, answer whatever you think is yep. right yeah okay, okay. Ooh, you ready nervous, but okay let's go yeah all right number one are you a dog person or a cat person oh <laughs> oh man don't uh, think about God, it don't think about it first thing <laughs> that popped in your head <laughs> cat because my girlfriend likes cats so cat, cat person all right okay number which, two well, number two <laughs> which of the following is your favorite marvel dc star wars or manga what? Oh man! <laughs> what? Mar- Marvel? I don't Marvel? Know. All right. Yeah, okay. All nice. right. Number three: swimming pool or beach? Swimming pool. Sand oh, okay. scares me. <laughs> <laughs> it annoys me. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm on the annoying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> number four. By the way, we have a hundred of these, so no, I'm just joking. Oh, it's uh, okay. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> number four. Yeah. Who are your top three artists that influence you right now? Okay, living or dead. Either, yeah. Wait, that's too hard. Okay, sorry. Okay, okay. Li- living, living, living. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. okay. That's better. That's better. Okay, living. Richard Schmidt, of course. Okay. Uh, Daniel Keith, uh, yep. of course. And oh, sure. uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Ronnie. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, nice. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> good job. Nice plug there. That was good. All right, <laughs> number five: boxers or briefs? Ah, oh, man, boxers. Boxers? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. There's a secret answer, uh, number three, which was uh, boxer briefs. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> number six, oil paint or charcoal? Oil paint. I paint, yep. Yeah. Number seven, favorite color? Alizarin crimson. Oh. I know. Uh, I, for some reason, knew you were going to say that. I felt like I just knew it. Really? <laughs> Is it because all the rest of you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it like fiery yeah. in your in your uh, painting too, so mm-hmm. it's great. I love it. Uh, number eight, coffee or tea? God, tea. I don't like either. I like Red Bull, but oh, that, I guess that, coffee. All right, Red Bull. Yeah, that's perfect. It. Red Bull, it is that's acceptable right. answer. Yep. Oh, these. Yeah. All right. Number nine, current favorite band or musician? Um. Current favorite band or musician? I don't listen to music. Michael Jackson? <laughs> Wait, you don't <laughs> listen to music. Thing. You dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I listen to popping music. So it's like, it's like various artists. I don't really look at the like artist name. Uh, Michael Jackson. I can, Michael Jackson. That works. That works. <laughs> I love it. Uh, number 10, post-COVID, where would you like to travel the most? Post-COVID? Um, Indonesia, actually, because that's where my girlfriend's oh. from. So we want to go visit her. We're about oh. to go before COVID, but you know, we're planning to go after Nice. That sounds amazing. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great. Time. Hope you enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number eleven. Why did you accept being on a podcast called Two Idiots? Oh man. Um, <laughs> I forgot I wrote uh, that like, in. <laughs> I, like I said, it's my vibe. Like I like the vibes that you guys are like you know, bringing. You know. <laughs> so yeah, and I like. We're always like just energy. we're always just uh, confused to why anybody would even bother reading our email to begin. Yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's like two idiots, idiots. <laughs> two idiots in <laughs> gmail what <laughs> no it stands out like it gets people intrigued it stands out oh thank you all right and number 12 finally uh the final question what mm-hmm. advice can you give to an individual listening to this who is an aspiring artist and take your time don't yeah this is not a lightning round question yeah what, okay what advice can you give somebody so i would say no one can really teach you art. I don't think art is something that can actually be taught. You know, I think you can learn the tools, the techniques to help expand, but I don't think any class will ever make you an artist. It's your experience your alone that will make you the artist. So don't be afraid of your experiences, right? Um, your what you do doesn't have to be limited to the like what 
you are taught because mm-hmm. what you're taught is simply the tools. Like, look at me. I, I'm literally using Richard Schmidt like techniques on it to paint Spider Man. Like, it's crazy. Like, I don't, you know, it's like, <laughs> right? Like, just paint what you like. And also, don't take painting so seriously. Painting is so stupid. Like, seriously, we're just like with like sticks with hairs at the end of it, like, you know, mixing around colored mud, slathering it on, like, you know, stretch. We're literally like glorified cavemen, you know? So don't take it so seriously, you know? Um, right? Like, have fun. I, I, I used you to know? tell Ronnie that uh, painters or artists are the most selfish, uh, selfish uh, profession out there in the world because we're just doing what we want, love and yeah, you know, yeah. Enjoy. I mean, hey, yeah. you know, someone's got to right. So, <laughs> but just yeah, I would just say just you know, learn, be hungry, be a sponge, and absorb as much as you can. Don't worry about style. Style will come. Style is accumulation of experience. Sorry, I'm just gonna like I'm gonna stop here because like I teach, so I keep telling a lot of. No, tips this is all. great. I, this is I awesome. think I think that is such a profound advice you give anybody that's uh, entering into the world and considering it. So no, I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. I especially like the fact you said we're just using we're just, sticks with hair on the end of it, and it's like, well, my oh my God, we are right. We seriously <laughs> are. We're just like colored mud. That's it. Yeah, my, we my are. My favorite right? is that you call painting is stupid. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I'm not gonna name anybody. I'm not gonna name any schools. But I've seen people going like, "Oh, you're painting in this style. Oh, that style. Oh, no, yeah. you got to paint in this style. What style? Like, we're all literally just freaking just doing this, right? And like, just yeah. do it. Who cares? Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, you know, yes, just, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think, no. you know, again, I think that's a really uh, great, wise advice. I mean, the the fear <laughs> of it is always what uh, keeps people from becoming an artist or wanting to uh, pursue it. So. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's, yeah, couldn't say I, it better. I think it's wonderful advice. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. Now, the act- shall we move on to the question train? Yeah, let's do the question train. Or uh, what I dubbed as the question express. Moving that, forward. Okay, that's the new, <laughs> the question express. All right, so. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Or do you uh, want to go ahead? No, go ahead. Okay, so this is uh, what we do for every episode. We have the previous interviewee ask a question for the future interviewee. So we had Shannon Vaught last time and mm-hmm. her question. And after this, by the way, you'll have to come up with a question for our gotcha. next person. <laughs> okay. Um, so Shannon Vaught asked, uh, choosing artists who are deceased, who would you choose for the classic game of fuck, <laughs> Mary kill? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Whoa. Wait, deceased? Okay. Deceased. Uh, Specifically yeah. oh. deceased. Man. Yeah, we were Man. taken by surprise as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She she kind of thought guard with that. It was good. Uh I could give you her answer. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, give me her answer first. It was um oh my god. Uh art 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 Artemis. Oh my god. Ronnie, help me with the names. Artemisa. Yeah. Artemisa uh, was a uh, fun. <laughs> Um, what's the next one? Mary is. I oh, lost her. I forgot who it was. <laughs> it's her story. Was, I was, was impressed that you had it written down. Is Schmidt? I thought I did, but apparently I didn't. Because <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> wait, hold on a second. Was it Schmidt or General? No, no, General's. No, wait, not Schmidt. No, not Schmidt. It's who the hell? Twenty minutes later. Q. I remember. It was the guy. I. I'm blanking a name, but but the guy that actually murdered somebody. Oh, uh, Caravaggio. Caravaggio. Yeah. Okay, that's right. That's yeah. kill. Mary, I think it was. Uh... God, who was it? This is good. This is giving you time to like really think about it. Mary is. You don't recall? Wait. I can't remember what what which one she said. I, I as you're saying it, yeah, I can't remember who knows, but I can't remember who she said. Mary. I always have a hard time spelling all those names, so I think I just ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I could watch a video well, right now. Man, it doesn't I, yeah, what are, what are yours? <laughs> oh, man, I don't feel that strongly or passionately about the Zeist artist to really know how to answer this. Can I? Okay, let me think. I don't, would, I don't know. Would it? Would it like, I mean, in the off chance uh, that the uh, living soul that you would name listens to this podcast, it could come out as rude. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Um, I... But, but then again, I don't feel that passionately about like just artists in general. Like, uh, let me think. Uh, hmm. Like, uh, man. Okay. 
I don't know what anyone actually looks like back then. So I'll just base it off. Of, can that's I just part like, of the base it off of, like your artwork? Yeah, like, nope. yeah. There you go. I think that's artwork. perfectly acceptable. That, that's a that's a good scientific way. Okay, of de definitely, <laughs> Sergeant. Yeah, <laughs> Sergeant. <Okay. Awesome. laughs> uh, I definitely marries. I know. Can I say Sergeant again? <laughs> yes, I, well... maybe a different time period of Sergeant or. <laughs> mm. Or Zorn, actually Zorn. Zorn, Zorn's Zorn's good. Okay. okay, okay, acceptable. Kill and, uh, Duchamp. Duchamp, Marcel Duchamp. Mm -hmm. Okay, not, not, when okay. He, not when he was painting, but when he was coming out with those like ready-made crap, like that completely yeah. <laughs> destroyed the art. The, the art mutt, the the uh, toilet. I think that's a totally acceptable like, answer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think mean, like that's fully acceptable. I mean, people who are listening to this who know who I am know how I feel about art schools. And that was one of the things that started the descaling of art school. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are good answers. No, those terrific, terrific answers. Thank you, Kai. So, yeah. which brings us to the next part of this uh, question express. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be, if you don't want, it doesn't even have to be art related. It's very open and yeah, it's open. Basically, wide anything you question. want. What oh, okay. Do? So, okay. So, just one question. Right? Okay, just cool. one yeah. question. Oh, also, you, question. You, you do need to answer your own question too. <laughs> oh, okay. Sounds good. Just one question. So, um, what would do you I like get to know if you guys are interviewing, or is it just we like we random? don't have anybody? We don't have our person lined up just yet, which I feel like that's even more exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. Totally All right. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. Okay. Um, this is a pretty fun one, I, especially since you say a lot of artists are music lovers. Um. Hmm. So in your, I guess, hmm, your top three, uh, your top three artists that you like, living or dead, um, if you can like compare their painting style to like a musical craft, either be instrument or dance or anything like that, oh. Oh, this what is good. style? would it be oh, okay 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 so if they're uh, a musician or they're into music like you type of music or instrument or whatever mm -hmm. i guess for me yeah. so i have to answer this since i'm into dancing i guess dance style like street dance style right so yeah <laughs> what you saying artist as in like a painter artist or like yeah like a, like, a, like a visual like, representation of like like a, like a yeah. painter uh, grass and yeah and then oh, okay okay you gotta compare their style to another art source and like in terms of like you know a style or energy or a, like you know like how can you connect it? Right? Okay. So I, I I could give you an example. I think now. So so if I I would say maybe Caravaggio, mm -hmm. I would throw him into probably somewhere around the the death metal. Uh, okay. Okay. I I guess. Like yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, hi. What's your answer to your own question? Um. So I guess for me, I'll just pick three artists. Um. I'm just gonna pick living artists just because that I mean you guys already know Sargent. Also, I feel like Sargent, you can't really like if I were to compare Sargent to anyone, it'd be Michael Jackson. <laughs> so like like Michael Jackson's like type of dancing. Uh because yeah, yeah. everyone's yeah. trying to be like him, right? Everyone's yes. outside by him. Yeah. So I guess Sargent will be and then like the second one. Let me think. Uh um, but then you know, that's Michael Jackson, like that's a person, but it's like a type of dance too. So I guess that's it, right? I think that's uh, yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's great, yeah. Yeah, and then I guess um let me think. Sorry, I, I really enjoy Richard Schmidt. Richard Schmidt yeah. is um yeah. I, I would view him more as like a, in terms of dance style, like maybe like classic popping and waving, you know. Oh, like yeah, yeah. Super super smooth with his waves, but also like can hit super hard. Boom, you know what I mean? With like mm -hmm. when he needs oh, to. I like this. This is good. Yeah. yeah. And then I guess the third one, um, I'll just like Stephen Asayo. I like Stephen Asayo. Okay. Um, B boy for Stephen Asayo because he's yeah. like super, super like you know with it like super loose, super sprint, and then like you know with B boying, it's like you're just like really explosive, right? It's yeah. it's like you know you're on the floor, you're like windmills, you're like you know you're doing like flips and stuff. It's like it's super, yeah. So yeah, I love this question. Yeah, this this is a an excellent question. Oh, I think it's because I, 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 you know, I always, it's actually, it's like, I always like to do this with artists. Like, I was like, hmm, who is the dance equivalent to like Jeremy looking and the dance a little? Who's the dance mm, equivalent? To, yeah. You know what I mean? So I always like yeah. do this. <laughs> right. Um, so, you know. Like being That's awesome. 
I, mm-hmm. I'm super excited to ask that one to, mm-hmm. to whoever our next person is. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, if you want to give us a, a quick little plug of your work, like where we can find you and, yeah. uh, and we'll, like I said, we'll, we'll post, uh, all of the, the, anything that you need, uh, to plug at the time of the, in mid August when we post the show. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. yeah, just, just let us know where we can find you. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, so you guys can find me over on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is just my name at Kylan Q. So hopefully you know how to spell that. Please like <laughs> in the title, right? Um, yes, over there. Yeah. yeah. My my website's also just my name, just at a dot com, mm-hmm. and then there you go. Uh, you can find me over there. You can find me on you know Sentient Academy. I have a upcoming mentorship coming out, or it may have already came out depending on when you guys post this. Yep. Uh, but you guys can just stay tuned for that. Uh, I might actually open up an uh, online store selling prints of like my pop culture paintings soon. Uh, oh, oh, awesome. After, um, especially after my first convention show, like at the end of August, like the last Sunday of August. So mm-hmm. keep a watch out for that, you know. Uh, Assuming that'll be linked to your website? That'll be linked. And I might even like have it available on Instagram too. Like, you know, Instagram have like oh, that yeah. little store. The option. Shop. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. I might, I might do that. Or maybe have it Etsy. I don't know. We'll see. Right. right. Um, yeah. But. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much all the all the plugs I guess I could think of. <laughs> awesome, that's good, that's great, and yeah, like I said, we'll we'll sell it even more once the uh, once the show comes out. So mm-hmm. thank you, I appreciate um, that. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for for being on the show with us. I, I really yes, loved right. getting to know more about your work and your process and 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 you. And it was just a, a real pleasure. So yeah, thanks again. yeah, very for much, sure, very much so. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right. Well, on that note. Yep. Yep. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But I guess we'll, we will uh, bid everybody adieu and Mm -hmm. we will see you for our next episode, which I have no idea what it is, but we'll figure it out. And um, we're talking about something nonsensical. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) Something two idiots relevant. So um, yeah. Thanks so much again, Kai. Uh, Thank thank you. you, Lovely Nato for co-hosting and we will see you guys later. And goodbye. Bye. <laughs> They're making art. They're talking art. One of the so gals. Now it's on. I have a great idea. Oh, uh, what is it? The other asked. Let's do a podcast. And so have become two idiots.